Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we are going to be taking our first look at Gold Mythic Javier who obviously is a telltale character coming to RTS. He is going to be appearing on the Ultra Token Wheel and well visually we've had Javier's in the past. I think this might be the first tough version. A lot of them have been strong um, but visually looks pretty cool on the right hand side. He has got his trusty baseball bat on his back but he is now wielding that shotgun. He has got random like magazines as well, so potentially another weapon. Uh, on the left hand side you can see he is holding a rifle, so potentially a rifle on the way, Javi's rifle would be kind of cool. He looks kind of haggard, so he's uh, gone through it a little bit, uh, kind of stained as well on his on his actual like, um, on his trousers, so yeah, he's, he's uh, been through it, he's been through it. I'm not sure what's going on with the background. It's just like some lights and some chairs. That's kind of interesting. I'm not really sure what's going on there. But if we look at his stats, at level 1,600, limit break 3, he has got 50,477 attack, 18,695 defense, and 24,304 HP. He is going to be a tough character, obviously, holding that two-handed weapon. He is going to be in the support role, gold mythic, of course, and he is obviously going to be joining... The Telltale Allegiance. Now, first up, we're going to be taking a look at Javier's Drenin Rush. It's called Home Run. It's a 55 AP cost rush. Apply 100% heal reduction and impair to an enemy for two turns if they're at max HP, or confuse them for three turns if they are not at max HP. Deal 1,300% damage to that enemy. So basically, this means that you are going to do a 100% heal reduction and impair the enemy and take them out basically with the 1300% damage hit if they're full HP against someone who's an outlast character you might not know if you impair a character who's in who's an outlast character before they go into outlast they don't gain any AP if they are able to cleanse stuff like Eris so basically she would just be sitting there without having any AP the heal reduction wouldn't work but that's good against characters that you don't want to be revived and they're max HP. So for instance, if you took out a character that wasn't an Outlast and they were max HP, they'd have 100% heal reduction for two turns, which means they couldn't get revived. And then conversely, if they aren't at max HP, you are going to confuse them first and then deal the 1,300 damage to that enemy instead. Now this wouldn't work against Eris because Eris would cleanse that confuse. But if they are not someone who would cleanse, then they would be confused in the outlast state. So here we are off of turn one, and as you can see, we have got a character at max HP that is going to be Eris. If we were to use the Adrenaline Rush against her, she should get impaired first, then get taken out, and you might not see it, but she hasn't gained any AP. There's no Adrenaline Rush there, so if I use the Defend action on my other characters, she will just get taken out. She will actually do her signature move, but the animation will not work. And she will just there she gains the ap from doing her signature move and then she just she's gone it's pretty much as simple as that when it comes to attacking someone who is max hp as an outlast character who does actually cleanse impair coming in first it, this would work against the jesus at the top left hand corner as well but someone who actually cleanses like eris this is very very nice indeed now as i said if eris had taken any damage the confuse would be cleansed when she was taken out however against other outlast characters like jesus here like you can see it doesn't matter if he's taken a little bit of damage he has taken a very small amount of damage even if it's just one it would then do the confuse first then the 1300 percent damage and that's what's going to happen here and as you can see he is going to be confused he will go into the outlast state so he will not be able to take his turn i think this would generally be a revive i think um, he will still get his halo, so there might be other characters you want to bring in to try and deal with that. But if you were to leave him as the last character alive and use this, he would definitely not be able to take his turn. Because if we do the defend action, you can see he is going to get taken out. He might not even give himself halo because it's not 100% chance. And he didn't take his turn. It's just there wasn't an animation. He might have done a basic attack, but sometimes there's a bit of weird stuff with outlast animations. But he just can't take his adrenaline rush or his signature move, which is very important against outlast characters. So this Adrenaline Rush seems pretty good as like a supplementary damage dealer in your team. Not that 
absolute nuker, but someone who will take out very specific targets, but can take out anyone. 1300% is a lot of damage. And because of this character's specialist skill, they should be able to get this adrenaline rush very quickly in the fight. Naturally turn two, but potentially turn one in the right team. If we look at the upgrades though on the adrenaline rush, you can see at grade two, which is one copy, they will get an upgrade where they confuse the enemy for two turns if they're not at max HP. At grade four, it will get an upgrade where it will impair the enemy for one turn if they are at max HP. And then at limit break one, it gets plus one duration to the hit roll reduction and impair and then confuse. So all, all of those would normally be one turn, but it all get boosted up to two turns. Actually, confuse gets boosted up to three turns, sorry. Then at limit break three, it gets plus 500% damage. So it goes from an 800% damage rush to a 1300% damage rush. I'd say this is very important. It is deal damage. You want to get as much as possible. A 500% damage boost is massive. And his base attack stat is huge. I only gave him like a normal 1535 um, weapon. And he's got Clementine as a leader in that previous clip. And he had like 140k attack. It is not hard to get his attack stat up with combat mods surrounded by 1535s as well. You could get probably 160 to 180, maybe even 200k with the right setup. And obviously, if you give him an attack buff on top, it's going to be very nice. There's not going to be too many characters that can, you know, deal with that kind of damage output. And that's what you want with a deal damage characters. That's just basically how they work. So yeah, nice upgrades for the Adrenaline Rush. It basically works very nicely. You just got to be aware of if a character is at max HP or not. Even if one HP damage is taken it will go to the confused state so just long press them in the fight to see what their current hp is now the next thing we're going to take a look at is the signature move and it is called heartbreaker it has got an initial cooldown of turn one cooldown of one turn number of uses unlimited remove a hundred percent of the enemy's bonus hp and then deal 700 percent damage to that enemy but plus 700 percent if the target has higher max hp than this fighter so the removal of bonus HP is actually massive because there are so many characters out there right now that have you know, over 150k max HP. I've seen characters with over 250k max HP. If they have 100% bonus HP on top, that is insane. But this is really, really good at the 100% removal. That's as if he's done an extra potentially, you know, 100,000 plus damage that you would need to do just by removing the 100% of the bonus HP. Very nice indeed. Every single defense team character should have a higher max HP than Javi because he only has 18,000 max HP. He's got extremely low max HP, which is actually a little bit of a problem because he can get dogpiled, so be aware of that. But he will absolutely nuke people, and that is 1,400% deal damage. And like I said, the bonus HP will get removed first. Again, without bonus HP, and the kind of attacks that this character can get, this should be really, really powerful. So here we are on turn one, and as you can see, we are coming up against a character that has a lot of bonus HP. These are the kind of characters I'm talking about that have very high health pools and also can get bonus HP very early on in the fight. We'll remove the bonus HP, then deal damage to the max HP. Now just take a look at the HP bar as we do the signature move. And you'll see the bonus HP just disappears before the hit comes in. And then obviously we'll do pretty significant damage. You see there it, there goes the bonus HP, then the hit. It is a deal damage or bypass weapons. So any like stun on defense or anything like that will not be a problem. And as you can see, we already have the Adrenaline Rush ready on um, Javi for the next turn because of his specialist skill. So very quick turnaround on his kit for sure. Now, going over the upgrades on the Sinich move, they're pretty basic. There's only three. Uh, grade three is 50% bonus HP removal. So it'll go from 50% bonus HP removal up to 100% bonus HP removal. This is just one copy, so not a problem. At two copies, at grade five, it gets an upgrade where it's plus 700% damage if the target has higher max HP than this fighter. We did see that in the previous clip, but you're probably going to see that at all times because it's max HP not current HP, but even if it was current HP, that means it would have lower than 18,000 HP. It wouldn't make any difference. It should always hit for that kind of number. So it's kind of strange that it is kind of been added there as that rather than just being made 1,400%, but it is what it is. 
a limit break till it gets minus one to starting cooldown. So that is going to be four copies. It will go from a initial cooldown of turn two down to turn one. This is not important to get the adrenaline rush to actually happen on time because he should have it happen no matter what on turn two as long as he doesn't get um, targeted off of turn one. But you want to do the damage. You want to do the damage. It's a massive amount of damage. Turn two adrenaline rush and then basically the turnaround again because of the quick cooldown should mean turn three signature move and then turn four rush. It'll be non-stop. And that is why it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool in the kit. Um, he has got a very quick rush, so if you can't signature move any time, he only needs to gain 20 AP, and he'll be able to rush because of 55 AP cost. So, yeah, very nice on the amount of potential damage that Javi is going to be able to deal out on his Adrenaline Rush and signature move. Deal damage needs that massive number, and both of these numbers are very, very high. Now, of course, Javi has got some mythic abilities. These are his passive skills. He is a support character, so he is going to have Cunning, when attacking or being attacked, 30% less likely to trigger enemy weapon effects and walker effects. Now, this isn't going to work with his signature or his rush. It will work when he gets attacked. Not many things would work for Javi, honestly, because a lot of things require him to hit attacks. But it is the way it is. The next one's called Bottom of the Ninth. There's a little bit of baseball reference there. At the start of each turn, if this fighter is below 75% max HP... They heal for 30% of their max HP for the rest of combat and get 60% attack for three turns. So if he does get targeted at all, he'll be healing for the rest of combat and get a big attack boost, which will be very nice for that Adrenaline Rush and for that signature move. And he will guarantee himself maximum AP off of turn one, as I showed. And then if he gets attacked a little bit, he should get healed and then obviously get a big attack buff. I would say you still want to have someone on the team to like you know help him a little bit because it is a bit problematic when it comes to uh his low hp uh, the next passive is called charismatic leader at the start of each wave all telltale allegiance teammates get a hundred percent counter damage reduction for three turns and this fighter gets 60 percent halo for five turns this is just good if it's just him but him in a Telltale attack team on the Stellar Road maps, this is nuts. There are definitely characters out there that are problematic. You've got characters that have got payback and so on and so forth. Javi could just nuke them off of turn one, get taken out, revived by the Halo, and his team will be safe because of all the camouflage. That is obviously very nice indeed. And in raids and war and so on and so forth, even if he's the only Telltale character, he's still going to get this bonus where he gets the halo which is just always nice uh, the next one's called batter up at the start of each turn 80 percent chance for this fighter to cleanse stun normalize and impair so he can basically cleanse a lot of stuff here very nice indeed uh, normalize you definitely want to to happen um you don't want his special skill not to happen stun and impair makes it so he can't use his adrenaline rush and obviously he can't take his turn so these are all nice ones to actually be able to cleanse. I like these quite a lot, honestly. It's only 80% chance, but it happens at the beginning of every single turn. So he's got a good chance to cleanse these. This does mean that you would want to go for maybe a different combat mod when it comes to his resist. You know, maybe confuse resist instead or taunt resist. Obviously, the choice is yours. Okay, so we'll start the turn. And as you can see, I'm just using the two Telltale characters just to show you how it works when it comes to the counter damage reduction above Clementine's head and above Javi's head. I did actually say that if Javi was to nuke a payback character, he'd get taken out and get revived by his Halo, but he's actually gonna get the counter damage reduction too. I thought it was just his teammates, but he's gonna get that too. So for instance, we have um, Peacekeeper here. I can use my signature move against him, take him out and not have any damage taken. The big bonus as well is his signature move removes that bonus HP as well. Another character that can have very high but HP and get very high bonus HP because of that. So we'll take him out and the counter damage will come back, but it'll get reduced down to zero because of that counter damage reduction. Now this will only work for Telltale characters, but in a full Telltale team on the Stereo maps, it's 100% gonna happen. And on an attack team, otherwise you could potentially just try and risk it. It's completely up to you how you wanna do things. Or you could have other characters getting counter damage reduction. For instance, I think there was a weapon 
that gave um, adjacent characters counter damage reduction, so there's maybe a way around that. I'm hoping that Javi's going to take a little bit of damage here. We'll see. We'll try and get him to take a little bit of damage before we do anything else. Did he take too much there? I don't think he took too much. Let, let's keep defending. Let's keep defending. Okay, now he should be low HP. And then you see he got the heal, and now he has a 60% attack buff somewhere. Did he get a 60% attack buff, or did I miss it? He definitely got the heal. There's the 60 spin certain attack, man. He's got a lot of things going on. Um, so now I can nuke, you know, basically someone else. I think now character's pain split. I'm not sure if it's going to take them out. It is going to pain split the damage, as you can see. But that's how it basically it works when it comes to his lower HP. Um, and if he did get taken out, he's got that halo, which it actually lasts for quite a long time. I think it's five turns, and it's still got like two turns left. Let's have a little look. Still got three turns left, which is actually crazy. So going straight into the upgrades on the passives, you can see at grade one, he gets the bottom of the ninth upgrade, where at the start of each turn, if this fighter is below 75% max HP, they heal for 10% of their max HP for the rest of combat and get 20% attack for three turns. Then at grade two, he gets the first half of cunning. When attacking or being attacked, 15% less likely to trigger enemy weapon effects and walker effects. Then at grade three, he gets bottom of the ninth part two. At the start of each turn, if this fighter is below 75% max HP, he heals for a further 20%, making it 30% total of his max HP for the rest of combat and gets a total of 60% attack buff for three turns. This is gonna be nice because he has a very good turnaround on his signature move and adrenaline rush. So should be getting a buff on at least one, if not two of those things happening. Now we move on to grades four and five. You can see a grade four, he gets the first half of Charismatic Leader. At the start of each wave, all Telltale Allegiance teammates get 40% counter damage reduction for three turns, and this fighter gets 60% Halo for five turns. At grade five, Batter Up Part One comes in. At the start of each turn, 40% chance for this fighter to cleanse, stun, normalize, and impair. When we move on to the Limit Breaks, we get Cunning Two coming in at Limit Break One making it 30% less likely to trigger any weapon effects and walker effects when being attacked or attacking. This will only work with his basic attacks. Like I said, his signature move and adrenaline rush are deal damage, so it will not work. At Limit Break 2, Charismatic Leader 2 comes in. At the start of each wave, all Telltale Allegiance teammates get 60% further counter damage reduction for three turns, making it 100% total. And this fighter gets 60% Halo for five turns. That counter damage reduction does also include heavy of course and then limit break three batter up two comes in at the start of each turn a further 40 percent chance this fighter gets to cleanse stun normalize and impair at the beginning of his turn obviously and that's 80 percent total his passives like i say i think they are pretty good they're not going to amplify his damage really in any way but they are going to make it so that he has better survivability his team potentially also has better survivability and he has a better chance to actually take his turn with the cleanses and so on and so forth i think his passive is nice his adrenaline rush and signature move are pretty good by themselves in terms of damage but potentially a little damage buff you know a little attack buff from someone wouldn't go amiss at all so yeah very nice indeed when it comes to his kit i think these are just a nice addition on top like i said he's a bit more of a su supplementary damage character he isn't going to be able to take out an entire team by himself but he is going to be able to take out an individual character pretty much every turn with massive, massive hits. So that's actually pretty nice. Especially how the adrenaline rush works when it comes to like the control and potential outlast counter. Now you've been seeing it proc throughout the, the clips and he has got a specialist skill. It's amped. It's a pretty basic one at the start of this fighter's turn. If there are 100% HP, they get 50% of their max HP. This happens on turn 1-2. So that's why he had his signature move and then he got his adrenaline rush straight away. You could potentially do his signature move and adrenaline rush off of turn one. You could potentially command with Laura before taking anyone's turn and Javi gets the AP and just do his adrenaline rush straight away. There are a couple of options. You can obviously use other characters like Glenn who also gives out AP and he could just adrenaline rush straight, straight away, you know. His signature move is quite nice though. It actually hits harder. So it isn't about the damage there, but um, the actual rush could be nicer to do just to take care of an outlast character that can be frustrating if they get the ball rolling on their kit somehow. So yeah, very nice specialist skill. Um, I will say you want someone to kind of protect him in some way so he gets this to proc after turn two when he does his adrenaline rush. 
um, just because it would be nicer to have it actually occur. Um, so it gets a natural turn, like every other turn of Dreadnought Rush rather than having to wait in any way. Now, as we saw at the beginning of the video, he does not have an attached weapon, even if he does have a weapon in his hands on the left hand side. I'm hoping that our weapon's going to be pretty brutal. Kind of nice to see uh, a heavy on a tough character. But um, when it comes to the weapon he needs in his hands, massive damage. So, attack in the first slot. Any amplifiers you can put in the other ones where it comes to actually just increasing his attack, things like double attack and stuff like that will not work. So, 1535s are good. Anything that gives attack boost, very good. Anything that procs anything that works when he actually gets a takedown is also good as well so this was gold mythic heavy and he is another telltale character coming to rts i might be able to show you a little kind of teaser on some other telltale characters that will be coming out in the future if i get time to make that video but heavy is a great addition another season three character joining clem and kate in rts from season three do leave me your thoughts on the addition of heavy and his kit in the comments down below i want to thank you very much for tuning in and as always keep on surviving guys keep on surviving